Well, this week, City Council Speaker Adrienne Adams laid out her bold plans for the city, with the mayor sitting right there in the front row. And some of those plans include fully funding 3K programs, hiring more city workers, okay, improving city services, and more funds for those much anticipated social service programs. A long list of expenditures contrasts, though, with Mayor Adams' more conservative approach. But the bottom line, what are New Yorkers going to see, and how will those budget negotiations in City Hall impact their everyday lives? Well, this morning, City Council Speaker Adrienne Adams joining me and going on the record. And Speaker Adams is here now for her first appearance on Picks and Politics. Great to have you, Speaker. Thank you so much for having me, Tim. I want to begin with your State of the City address. Very bold uh, agenda that you laid out there in a very passionate speech. Listen to that very carefully. When you listen to it in its totality, even though the mayor is in the front row applauding you, it is a bit of a stark contrast from what he takes as a more conservative approach. Um, how do you plan to bring those two plans together to make something possible for the city? I don't really think they're that much apart. You know, overall, the mayor and I do agree on so, so much. It's just mm -hmm. how we get there. Okay. Sometimes takes a little bit of a twist this way and a little bit of a twist that way. But I believe, again, this year we're going to get there. A big issue and a big topic regarding the budget is the migrant crisis, right? You now are talking about expanding the new arrivals strategy teams. How will that welcome new migrants into the city? How do you see it play out? Well, I see it playing out more as putting a structure in place. For okay. right now, the migrant situation has been s settled pretty much on an emergency basis. Mm -hmm. We're in crisis, it's an emergency, and what do we do? So it's more uh, been more of a knee-jerk, even though I think that the processes are probably more tapered mm -hmm. um, than they have been. But we need more structure because the migrants keep coming. We need more safe spaces for them. We need more people with experience in these situations. So we're putting together a group of advocates and uh, government experts and other folks to make sure that we have a, a better type of structure in place to greet them and deal with the situation. That's going to cost money, obviously, right? And the mayor was talking about cutting, cutting, cutting to make up for the lost wages. How do you plan to pay for that? Well, you know, the, the, the payment is one thing, and we're taking a look at it on, you know, with broad strokes. Everything that we do, as you said, has, has a funding, you know, mm -hmm. side of it also. But we're taking a look at all of it. We believe it can be done. We, we believe that it won't be that expensive to do. And uh, we think that it's something that's very, very ne necessary and essential to add. When you look overall at the, the way that the city has handled the migrant crisis, how do you think it's been handled thus far? Um, I think that overall, New York has handled this situation very, very well overall. This is a situation that New York should have never been put into mm -hmm. in the first place. We have been left with a burden, and it's been said time and time again, the burden of a nation has come to this city. And this city, I say, mm -hmm. New York State is exponentially larger than New York City. Mm -hmm. So even when we take a look at the, the bigger situation, it should be shared more with the state. It should be shared more with other places in this entire country. We should never have been left alone to take care of this crisis. Do you agree with the way that the mayor handled the cuts, right? There were cuts, the money came back. There were cuts, the money came back. It was a big topic of conversation. And then the city council was saying all along, the money's here. There's, a, there's millions yeah. upon millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah absolutely. We, al we always knew the money was there. So it tended to be a bit of a mystery as far as, you know, now you see it, now you don't. Mm -hmm. um, the money is here, now it's not. Oh, now it's here, we found it again, and we're going to put it here instead. We always knew that the money was there, and it should have been uh, placed appropriately to begin with, which is something the council has always said. Do you feel that there was a miscommunication then between the council and the mayor because of that issue? Because you were saying it was there and it just wasn't being heard. Yeah, there, there had to have been. Hindsight, there had to have been some type of miscommunication mm -hmm. somewhere along the line. Some wires got crossed and we did not get the memo. Yeah. All right. I want to go back to, to, to your plan here, focusing on education. So important, right? Yes. I hear from parents all the time about mm -hmm. pre-K, about 3K. Is there funding, right, to make that happen? And how do you see that playing out? More seats are needed, obviously. Yeah. It has to happen, Dan. Our children are our future. Their education is at stake right now. There is space available for our children, and we are going to have to build 
on that 3K platform for your children, for my grandchildren. We have to make a place for them. I believe the money is there. Mm -hmm. um, people call it the budget dance, but it is really a part of negotiation and the seriousness of negotiation. If we are serious about our children, mm -hmm. making sure they are appropriately educated in our city, we are going to have to make a way for 3K. So the mayor has said that the COVID funds, were what we're paying for some of that, those have since expired, mm -hmm. right? So where do you see the money coming from? Again, the money is in the budget. Okay. You're going to have to watch us dance to see that happen. Yeah. Oh, there's going to be a dance. I thought you were going to sing, I believe the children are our future I for could. a second. <laughs> it's okay. Next time. <laughs> it's your first time here. Uh, a big component of your speech, though, was, was about holding the city accountable, yeah. right, with more oversight. Why do you think that is so important at this point in time? We need more answers. Um, we get a lot of answers through our oversight as it is. Our oversight hearings really do tell the story, mm -hmm. and it is the heart and soul of the city council. It's our job as the co-equal branch of government to make sure that we maintain and gain the accountability that should be there. We need to see more, though. We need more information because a lot of times the oversight hearings will just give us a little snapshot again mm -hmm. of what's really going on in the agencies. But if we have ongoing, I, I propose a report card that we are going to we're going to make that happen in the council we have to the MMRs the mayor's management reports give us a little piece of it but we need more detail we've got to see the bigger picture and the council is committed to getting it right because you have the oversight hearing yeah and you get the information yeah. but where does it go from there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and holding somebody accountable exactly right uh, it, it goes again to our information back to the agencies back to our recommendations mm -hmm. to the administration as a whole and, and part of it is how can the council help to make this happen? And that's where legislation takes place. So there are a lot of pieces to this puzzle. Given the state of the investigations the, or the inquiries, as the mayor calls them right now, into his administration and his campaign, do you think there's an issue with trust when it comes to the mayor's office and that's why you're calling for more oversight or they're not connected? No, they're not connected at all. This is something that's gone on and, and quite frankly, it's not just this administration. Mm -hmm. I've seen the prior administration, seen through the prior administration as a council member as well. So it's not unique to this particular administration. I think it's just something that is a little organic. It's something that, that's woven into the fabric, perhaps, mm -hmm. of the administration altogether. There's some information that the administration wants the council and the public to see and there's other information that no, they don't need to know that. Right, but when it comes to the mayor and his inquiries, do you think there is a trust problem? I, I, I really don't think that that has too much to bear mm -hmm. uh, on what we're doing as a council, so I really don't think those dots are connecting. I'm sure you've seen the articles, right, that talk about how you're at odds with the mayor. Yeah, all the time. And, I see that all the time. Yes, and I did ask the mayor about this recently, about his relationship with you, and he said that you're meant to disagree, and you can be disagreeable, right. right, and touted your relationship uh, from the previous uh, high school yep. that you went to together. What is your relationship with the mayor from your perspective? Uh, our relationship, as it has always been, is very, very cordial. I can call him right now. I can text him right now, vice versa. He texted me after the State of the City mm -hmm. yesterday. Great job, Speaker. You know, we have a really, really good rapport. We have a good, good relationship. I, I think what people are sensing, though, when it comes down to the nuts and bolts of our work, we lead differently, we govern differently, and mm -hmm. sometimes our thought processes are differently about the same goals that we have and mm -hmm. the ways that we can accomplish those goals. And I see that playing out more than anything else, perhaps, in the media and other spaces. The perception is wrong. The perception's wrong. Right. Yeah. Okay. We are in Women's History Month, and I want to talk are. to you uh, about your speakership and really leading the largest now minority uh, minority female council, right? Yeah, majority. Um, majority. Yeah. So what is that like for you at this point in time, especially during a month like this? Spectacular. You know, when I look back on uh, this, my second term as speaker, coming in, it was, you know, the best way to coalesce this group, the best way to get our thoughts together, all of our goals together. Now two years in and being elected by the entire majority mm -hmm. of the city council and leading that are 31 women and the first black speaker, the first mother, grandmother, mm -hmm. we actually feel things that our neighbors feel. It's different. So this is a spectacular moment in time. It's a spectacular moment for me. I am so blessed, so honored to lead this amazing body of fantastic, intuitive, thoughtful mm -hmm. women and the men who get it. Yes. In yes. this city council, I feel uh, tremendously blessed. Do you think you would ever want to be the first female mayor? 
Oh, my goodness. Well, what I keep saying is that people are like, you know, what are you running for next? I think I'm just going to, right now, I'm running for the bus. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, Speaker Adams, thank you for your first appearance here. You're welcome back anytime. Thanks so much. Okay.